California. Hmm. Was it just because Mark is being saturated by so much streaming services and things like that, you think? Well, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people ask my opinion, you know, my opinion, why I think the soaps, you know, a lot of them went off the air. And there's a couple of reasons. They're very, very expensive to produce. Over like a million, over a million dollars a day between the actors, the directors, the producers, the writers, and then, um, you know, then all the, the prop people, the right. carpenters and everybody and, and all that, you know, all that stuff, it, it's, a, it's a daily budget. And it was just very, very expensive. And the networks were really cutting back. And another thing, the ratings were really down on all the shows. Hmm. Excuse me, because, you know, the last how many years, every family is a two-income family. Hmm. Back in the 70s and the 80s, it was usually the husband who went to work and the women were home with the kids. So they would, you know, whether they would sit and watch the soaps or at least have them on, while they were doing housework or taking care of the kids, but there were a mm. lot of people watching. And then, like I say, with the two income families, you know, they've, and unfortunately, the if you, I'm using an old term, if you would VCR mm. uh, a show or, you know, or now, of, of course, record it, it doesn't count toward the Nielsen rating which is rather unfair, but um, at, at least that's how it's how it was, you know, in the 2000s or so. You know, uh, like I say, if you record a show, it wasn't counted toward the Nielsen ratings. But um, and that and and I think that one of my personal opinions are back in 95 with the O.J. Simpson trial that. All the shows during the day were preempted because they would show the trial all day. And that's where a lot of people got interested in the court in the court shows, you know, the court system. And from the OJ trial came Judge Judy and Judge this one and Judge that one and Court TV and all this. And those shows are very, very inexpensive to produce. Mm. And when there were more channels for people to watch, people would watch the, the like I say, the judge shows or the court shows. Mm. And, you know, uh, you know, I think that that had a lot to do, a lot to do with uh, ratings, you know, f falling also. Yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah. I had to say goodbye. Yeah. To your, yeah. To your yeah. own life to live family. That must have been Yes. Hard. Yeah. And I, I st I'm still in touch with a lot of people, mm. whether it's uh, I, I work with some, some people now. You know, now I'm back to doing camera work. So um, I work with a lot of the camera people who are on One Life to Live or some of the other soaps who I've gotten to know over the years mm. or else other people who who've moved away uh we're still friends on facebook so that makes me wonder you're out of a job uh was it relatively easy to get work right after that um hmm, what did i do, do i you, do you have an agent do you have an agent in something like that? no i, it, I, ne I never union? had an agent <clears throat> um so how do you uh, get how do you get gigs is it just like a network Thing, I, I, ne I never I never needed to because when I signed my first contract with One Life to Live it was a three year contract and then toward the end of the third year the executive producer would call me hey your deal is up we're going to give you more you know this much more money and you, you know uh, you can get another week's vacation you okay with that <laughs> and I was like uh yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so uh, I just went contract to contract. Um, you know, for 16 years, I directed One Life to Live. 
And I was a cameraman for 15 years. And then, like I say, I directed for 16 years. So, um, but then when, when One Life to Live was over, um, my next job, I heard through somebody that this syndicated show was looking for a director. And if you know Better Homes and Garden magazine, they had a TV division and they were expanding their show. The show was called The Better Show, B E T T E R, mm -hmm. for Better Homes and Gardens. Mm -hmm. And I got an interview and they were like, wow, a real, you know, a real director. You know, th this will be great. So, you know, the show, it was a really, really good show. It was on like six o'clock in the morning on mm. some local show, a local Long Island channel or something like that. Mm -hmm. The show was great. We had great guests, real, very well-known celebrities. We had a kitchen set. Uh, we had, you know, uh, real chefs come in and then we had music people. So, uh, you know, I directed that for about a year and a half and I just didn't like the way the show was run. It, I don't like to badmouth people, but no. it just, uh, you know, not very professional. And, and I left and then a couple of weeks later, um, I heard about ABC doing a pilot show and that they were looking for camera people. So I contacted the guy who I knew was doing, who was hiring for that show. He had worked on one life to live and I called him up and I said, Hey, you know, I used to looking for, for a camera person. And he was like, yeah, are you interested? And I'm like, yeah. He said, okay, come in next Thursday and Friday. And we're, you know, so that started me back in the, in the, camera world so you and, get, get uh, work relatively quickly yeah yeah people you know yeah now as as technology has changed and that have the cameras changed a little bit was it just pretty easy to adapt to new cameras and different studios and situations um yeah yeah the, the cameras were basically the same the big difference was that they had these big color viewfinders, <laughs> which were really good. We had little black and white viewfinders, yep. but uh, these were nice color viewfinders. And uh, and the technology, um, you know, they use a, a lot, a, a lot of different cameras, like uh, what's called a jib camera, which is on a camera at the end of a big arm mm -hmm. that swoops over the audience. You know, so things like that, or these steady cams, which are um, a, a camera person wears this special vest that the camera is mounted on, and they can run around the set, and it's as smooth as silk. The shot, you know, because it's all on springs and all this. It's a, it's quite a contraption, but you know, but basically, basically, it's the same. And you still you know, covered. You were still covering sports events too. I, I I got back into into doing sports, and um, I got hooked up by uh, with um, MetLife Stadium, which is where the New York Jets and the New York Giants play. I uh, I shoot every home game for them <coughs> of both the Jets and Giants. Excuse me. <clears throat> And um, with ABC, I I filled in on the Katie Couric show and also the Chew. And I I got put on the Chew, uh, and I was doing these cameras called robotic cameras, which were up in the lighting grid. And I would sit in a separate room, and it was like a, it's like a video game. You have a joystick, and monitors in front of you, and you switch between the different cameras wherever the action is. Like on the Chew, it was a cooking show, so the cameras were placed over the kitchen sets. So my assignment was to get in, you know, shoot into the pots 
to see the the food cooking and also when the chefs were chopping food i would put another camera on that and this is all one person job yeah wow <laughs> yeah 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 i operated three cameras like that and uh and uh, i was there one day and i was supposed to observe the guy who was doing it and I had a little experience on this better show of doing the robotic cameras. Nothing quite as difficult as this. But I said to the camera guy, I said, can I try it? And I did it, and I taped the whole second show. <laughs> and the word got back to the director that I did the show, and he came in to see me, and he put his hand out, and he says, welcome to the chew. <laughs> So I was on the Chew full time, which was, I was on that show for five years until that went off the air. Mm. I'm starting to think maybe it's me. Mm. No. <laughs> well, did but, you ever did you ever want to shoot movies or TV no, shows? No, no, I, I I never I never wanted to do movies because they do a page of dialogue in one day, and it's just. Me personally, it's so slow. I'm, I've been used my whole to, my whole career, thirty one years on One Life to Live. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. You know, it, it's it's a factory and it moves mm. fast. Whether I was on camera or directing or, you know, or or whatever. And I know I could never, never work on a movie. It would just be much too slow for me. Mm. You know, and it, it's also it's much much different equipment yeah. you know that you have to go to school for and all this and it's a whole different process but um but just for the fact that that it was it, it's real slow i just i just couldn't do it <laughs> i just couldn't speed. do it gotcha no no do you shoot any uh home movies vacations and things like that if you like if it's your weekend off are you picking up a camera like record mm. a kid's birthday or something like that no, no. no i mean when, when my when my kids were small i had the the big camcorder mm -hmm. but um but not now <laughs> not now um weekends are just relaxing time or golf time or oh. you know mm -hmm. Nothing just whatever that. time so yeah, I was really curious. You, you said you shot at the the shot. That doesn't sound really good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he recorded yeah, footage yeah, at the Republican yeah, Democratic yeah, Convention. Yeah, you can call me John Wilkes Booth. I shot at the. Uh, <laughs> yes, he's uh, a time traveler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how do you get a, a gig like that, filming at the um, at these locate at the conventions? Just from just from know just from knowing people at ABC. Um, I uh, I was working at the Chew, and one of our what's called a, a tech manager, a technical manager, they like oversee the whole operation, and I was friendly with him, and I and I had heard about the upcoming conventions and and debates. This was back in two thousand fifteen or sixteen, whenever mm -hmm. that was. So I said, Larry, I said, who's who's uh hiring for for the conventions and everything and he told me and i ended up I, I knew the guy from years back so i said would you happen to have his phone number and, and he gave it to me and i called the guy oh, of course i remember you how you doing and you know and all this and uh and i said listen i, I said would you have any room you know uh, i would really be interested in in doing this stuff and he was like absolutely he said i'd love to have you and love to work with you again and um and i did the uh the last republican and democratic convention one one was in cleveland we were there for about 15 days and then we flew right to philadelphia where the other convention was and it was I worked in the ABC News booth with George Stephanopoulos and David Muir and all, and it was just what an experience. It, and what are the just, challenges of covering something like that? You got cameras everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but uh, like I say, I, I I was in I was in the um, it was really 
for World News Tonight. Mm. Um, 